All right, Linus Linkovicius is a Lithuanian diplomat. He is an ambassador at large. He was a former foreign minister and former minister of defense. Hi, sir. And good, to, good to have you. Good to talk to you again. I mean, what is happening on the Belarusian por Polish border right now? How would you characterize it? No, it's characterized already by uh, various institutions as hybrid attack, which is really definitely this is true. But I would, I would add that now it's also kind of humanitarian uh, situation because uh, of very clear reasons. You know, these people which were collected in Minsk as tourists invited by the regime, then converted to migrants brought to the border and they were attempts to cross the border illegally uh, in various places, first in Lithuania, later in Poland. And uh, these people, where you so to say this group was enlarged uh, every, every, every day, every week, and uh, they went too many. And I can assume that dictator take a took a decision to get rid of them and uh, simply push pushing them to the border. And now we have thousands of them gathered uh, by Polish border and with no way back, no way forward. And uh, in the conditions which are definitely very difficult because you probably know there's minus temperature. Uh, and uh, these people are not, not used to that, to say the least. And there are also some women and, uh, and also some minors. Uh, so this is also in addition to, to what we were describing before, it's humanitarian really disaster and it should be taken quite quickly by international organizations, by all international organizations uh, in order to make sure that this is not acceptable. Linus, uh, Mr. Ambassador, I mean, when you say they were collected, you're saying that this was not a natural migration, uh, as yeah. we've seen in other parts of Europe from North Africa and Syria and elsewhere. You're saying that President Lukashenko did what? Yeah, it, indeed. I had, had in mind that that was artificially made. By, by the way, to, to recall uh, this uh, recent history, you probably remember after hijacking of Ryanair plane and after some sanctions introduced against uh, the Russian uh, Belavia, uh, so to see company, uh, uh, he made a statement, public statement, that he will flood, I will quote, by migrants and drugs, European Union. And this process started almost immediately, I would say. Right. Let me, let me that, interrupt. So, so because I, I want, let's quote it directly. On May the 26th, he yeah. said, we used to stop the drugs and migrants. Now you'll have to catch them yourselves. And then on June 22nd, he went even further. You launched a hybrid war versus us and demand we protect you like before, question mark? Mm -hmm. What was he yeah, saying? Indeed, there? indeed. And also it was a uh, reason to make some kind of trade-off, I would say, which is also usual for this regime. It had to do with the uh, political prisoners, if you remember, when they re released, uh, it was uh, again kind of uh, motivation maybe to lift sanctions. And now there were also hints made by him and also by Russia, uh, if you remember that pay some money and they will try to, to, to manage this, this, this crisis. So this is that as was, easy as That was is. said again by the Russian foreign minister Lavrov mm -hmm. yesterday. This week he said, well, Indeed. maybe there should be some kind of financial arrangement. I mean, is there, yeah. are they really seeking some money for migrants? Well, they're seeking to, to leave sanctions, you know, because it looks that these sanctions, although they are not sufficient, one can say, you know, could be more efficient, but any, anyway, they are working. The Polish Prime Minister has accused President Putin of Russia of orchestrating this. What would you say about Putin and Russia and their role in this since Lukashenko lost an election? He's been well, locking you know, up his own people, jailing his opposition. There are widespread claims of torture. As you mentioned, he hijacked the Ryanair flight that was between two NATO countries uh, mm. and arrested a journalist. Sanctions were taken out. What is Russia's role? Unfortunately, we can see lately, it's not, uh, it started not yesterday, by the way, when Russia uh, instigating crisis and uh, launching some kind of crisis in various regions. And through this uh, crisis, they can manage the situation, not as a peace dealer, not as a manager, but as a, as a kind of stakeholder. And uh, this is not exception. This is not exception at all, uh, given uh, the fact that uh, this is also known, even not for the experts, that this country disappearing uh, as, as we can speak, uh, de facto, de facto disappearing as independent state 
it took so long uh, implementation of the so-called uh, two-state union agreement it lasts more than 20 years it was very difficult uh, for, from time to time to, to, to realize to implement implement but now when this leader is not legitimate first of all leader he's uh, really vulnerable he's weak and uh, they are using whatever they can to to absorb that country fully and to, to make sure that this is definitely kind of integrated part maybe de facto uh, and maybe not the euro and uh, so uh, with all consequences including like a training field for some methods so whatever it's uh, they are doing i doubt that it's done without coordination with kremlin it's simply not possible but because whatever they are doing it's done in coordination after consultation sometimes and if you're following meetings of uh, so-called two 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 leaders uh, they are also taking place around these events around this hijacking in fact lukashenko just met with president putin a couple of days ago Exactly. So, and they talked on phone recently about situation on the border. Also discussed this, this, and uh, so to, to say that this is done without coordination or without knowledge, or even maybe without guidance, would be really too much. So we definitely should look at Russia as a source of all this, uh, what is happening, and of, of the reason of all of that. Without responsibility, usually, you know, Russia usually uh, enjoys a role of backseat driver in whatever crisis they instigated themselves. And distancing from what is happening, be it Crimea, be it Donbass, Syria, be, be it now migration crisis, this is really becoming a habit and it shouldn't be taken uh, for simple reasons by the national community. It went too much, too many examples, too many precedents to make sure that this is definitely something like a scam and cannot be taken like this. What is the point? Are they trying to, I understand Lukashenko's point. He's trying to put pressure on Europe to withdraw sanctions. <clears throat> What is President Putin doing, or is this just his normal course of trying to destabilize the EU whenever he can? He tries to destabilize, also trying to divide, uh, also testing resilience. This is happening from the, I would say, war in South Caucasus in 2008, so it's nothing new, shouldn't surprise anyone. And he's testing how far he can go, how deep, deep he, can, he can go without reaction, or without proper reaction. If this price is agreeable, he's continuing to do the same. So I mentioned already South Caucasus and uh, occupation of 20% of Georgian territory. Uh, we know all of us that nothing happened after that, basically, and no changes even in rhetorics. And now later we have annexation of Crimea, we have now uh, aggression against Donbass, and all these methods are tested, and they, they, if, if it's possible, they are going on, you know, simply. And uh, really, you're right, destabilize the European Union, make it weaker, uh, also testing resilience, uh, ability to react to the threats, because the only arguments they can use, again, unfortunately, this is not positive approach. This is kind of creation conflict and through the conflict becoming important, uh, becoming, so to say, reasonable. And, uh, and this, is, this is how it works. Why is Lithuania declared an emergency? Lithuania's parliament declared a state of emergency at the country's border with Belarus on Tuesday. Um, it allows border guards to use mental coercion, proportional physical violence to prevent migrants from entering Lithuania, uh, bans all travel to within five kilometers of the Belarus border unless allowed by border guards. Yeah, since we're watching the situation and what's happening now in our neighborhood, uh, this is neighborhood very close, I would say. It's 40 kilometers, you know, something, 30 kilometers, well, what is happening. And definitely all these crowds uh, could be redirected re very easily to other direction, uh, which was the case already last night. We have almost up to 300 attempts to cross the border, which was three times more than no normally, which is not normal at all. But nevertheless, this is a big increase. And there were also reports that some crowds were re redirected again to our border so we have to take measures and uh, that's that's important to note you, you should you should know probably and, and uh, the length of the border is much much longer 670 kilometers it's really much more than with our neighbors in poland and you know this border is definitely not well protected everywhere not everywhere we have technical measures and uh, we need a lot of sort of personnel to do that so it's not easy and uh, this uh, emergency status will help us to uh, collect, so to say, more resources uh, to take uh, take this uh, challenge uh, properly. Is this an Article 5 situation for NATO? You, Lithuania, Poland are both NATO members. 
the people see this as, a, as hybrid warfare, uh, characterizing it as an attack by, certainly by Lukashenko and by extension, possibly by Russia. Is it an Article 5 situation where members of the EU and members of NATO have to support Lithuania and Poland and anybody else uh, who are having migrants pushed at their border like that? I would say it more discussed in the context of Article 4, <laughs> just consultations, not yet Article 5, but even Article 4 was launched maybe five times, if I remember correctly. In the history, it's not very often happening. And this is, it has to do with military threat, basically, and it's not yet the case. Uh, whatever is happening, it's hybrid, it's massive, it's really confused, confusion and uh, big, big problem, but uh, we should keep in the arsenal all these uh, leverages, including Article 4, consultations with the allies. I shouldn't say it's not happening. Hybrid team was dispatched to Lithuania some time ago, and they looked at the situation quite carefully in depth. Uh, analyzing, so our our allies are observing. Uh, it's it's uh, so to say, not to say that no no contacts and no, no information shared with them. This is not true, but uh, it's not yet time maybe to look at that as a military. Uh, fortunately, it's not yet military threat, but who knows? Uh, provocations could be whatever. How do people inside Lithuania view this? I mean, do, are they are they uh, w with fear, worrying that this situation is starting to escalate along the Polish border? along the Lithuanian border, um, and that the, the end game uh, really is to destabilize NATO countries. No, people, of course, are not relaxed, especially in the border areas. They're watching television, they're reading papers and following what is happening in social media. And uh, those reports they're receiving uh, definitely cannot uh, satisfy anyone. So people are concerned. I shouldn't say this is panic. No, it's by far not yet the case. Uh, but we are, we are vigilant, vigilant. Uh, we are looking at the station very seriously, and uh, I, I believe that people sharing, mostly sharing all these measures which were taken by the government so far, and we also try to reach this uh, across party agreement, which shouldn't be uh, discrepancies in the views of political parties, that's also very important, so it's discussed uh, from time to time the parliament. And this decision, which was uh, reached uh, in the parliament, uh, introducing this emergency status was also done after consultations across all spectrum of political forces. So this is exactly what we feel. And people, lately people everywhere were quite concerned. Too, too many challenges for them. This is migration. Also, let's not forget pandemics. So this time is not easy. And that's uh, also the case why people are really quite concerned. Is there a link to the buildup of Russian forces on the Ukrainian border and what President Putin is doing there as well. Uh, Russian forces, you meant, yeah? I'm sorry, Russian forces on the Ukrainian border. Is there a, let me ask you again, is there a link between the buildup of Russian forces now on the Ukrainian border while this is taking place along the Polish border? Uh, well, the link is uh, when we uh, looking at the roots of what's happening. So if you have the same source, of, of, of this, these events uh, as, as uh, directors of the performance. So this is uh, the linkage. Uh, I couldn't link directly what is happening, but usually when crisis is appearing, uh, sometimes they are coordinated to, to, to draw some attention maybe from one uh, crisis to another. So uh, it's linked because the same source, as I said, because Russia is a player everywhere and uh, unfortunately not in positive way. So this is very direct linkage. How does this end? With more sanctions against Lukashenko? Not only Lukashenko, I would not forget Russia, as I said. This is the same, same picture. But also, uh, with regard to Lukashenko, as you probably know, this fifth package is in preparation of sanctions, and uh, we have to speed up the process, that's for sure, and to make sure that they will be targeted, tangible, not only in individual sanctions, but also economic segments is very important. And to you know, to, to to sanction all these companies and with our latest proposals, also to sanction airport maybe, the airport of Minsk was becoming a harbor, harbor you know, for all these events and those uh, companies which are cooper cooperating with this airport also sh should uh, take a note notice that this is something happening and they are uh, del deliberately or not, but they are part of this chain of of. Uh, of this uh, crime, basically. So uh, the sanctions should be really more, uh, more speedy, more efficient, more targeted. And I would add not only against uh, Belarusians, but also Russia shouldn't feel impu impunity in, in the context of these events. Linus Linkovicius, uh, always great to talk to you, sir, ambassador at large for Lithuania. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.